I'd like to welcome our next speaker, Mark Ouellette from the CIHR. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk about the, the Canadian effort in microbiome and how we can link with the international uh, efforts on uh, microbiome. So uh, my name is Marc Ouellette and I'm the scientific director of the Institute of Infection and Immunity, the lead institute within the 13th Institute at CIHR for microbiome research. So I'll give a brief introduction of the efforts that uh, have so far been uh, through uh, CIHR. So there was the creation of the Canadian Microbiome Initiative by my predecessor that is in the room, Baggy Singh, in 2007. And there was a first workshop with, uh, in collaboration with Genome Canada in, uh, two, in June 2008. There were 70 Canadian participants, and there were gut, but also lung, uh, vaginal, all the organs where, or the, the sites where microbiome research can happen. And from after this workshop, this consensus workshop, there were two uh, targeted funding opportunities. Catalyst grant to let people start going into the microbiome research, and then uh, emerging team grants. This led to uh, a total uh, investment at CIHR of $17.2 million directly focused on uh, microbiome uh, research related to health. And uh, these were three were on guts, two on lung, one on vagin vaginal, and one uh, that was mostly bioinformatic tools for all these different programs. This is still ongoing. It's still ongoing at least until 2015. For most of the project, maybe one is a, a little shorter. So the, the future, we still have a bit of time to go forward, but things are progressing uh, rapidly, and we want to see how we can move forward. So one, one approach, and I think this has been uh, highlighted uh, by this school's first talk and also by head saying that we have to engage also the public to educate how important and how new this field is. And uh, we, uh, the Institute, in collaboration with uh, the Institute of Nutrition, Metabolism, and Diabetes, we've been active in trying to engage with uh, the public. So we had some, what we call in Canada, café scientifique. So these are, uh, we're having, it's really in coffee places where we have, we serve coffees and biscuits to, 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 to the lay public, and where we discuss about uh, microbiome research. We also had a workshop that was for journalists. So we bring journalists in Toronto, and we had a, a full day of engagement, of discussion about the impact of microbiome research. So by educating the public, they ask, they go to politicians and so on, and that can increase eventually the level of funding for microbiome research. So, and this will be uh, my last slides about, although there's still uh, a lot of funding going in microbiome research, so what are the possibilities? So one thing that we've done in Canada, which is a huge country in terms of uh, landscape, but fairly small population, where there's possibility to uh, network and engage the different individuals that are involved in microbiome research. So we have a number of programs that are facilitating the networking, and we believe that when we'll have a strong national uh, concentration of individuals that talk to each other, it will be also good to go to the international scheme and be able to engage in a number of different activities related to microbiome. So uh, they are what we call meeting planning dissemination, and already twice all the microbiome community, Canadian microbiome community, came to discuss about how to uh, harmonize or to use the bioinformatic tools, uh, the sampling procedures to be able to move forward. At CIHR, we have something called the Roadmap Signature Initiative, where many institutes are coming together to uh, tackle some of the big challenges that are related to health. And we just had a, a, an open call for personalized medicine. And it is quite intriguing and quite interesting, actually, that there were several proposals that are at the level of intent that related to microbiome research. So uh, showing that we've created capacity and now people are going uh, into personalized medicine. I'm the co-lead on a big uh, inflammation roadmap signature initiative where all the talks that we've heard in the last few days, there was al always a link to inflammation, often low-grade chronic inflammation, and that are certainly a, a link with microbiome. And this is my, um, my challenge to try to incorporate all the microbiome activities in this inflammation uh, roadmap signature initiative, especially thinking about a phase two of microbiome research. 
Also through the Roadmap Signature initi Initiative, we have a, a, a strategy called the, the SPORE for Strategy for Patient-Oriented Research. And the first level of funding that we'll have is for support units for cohorts. And we have in Canada a number of unique cohorts, like the GEM cohort. This is for uh, Crohn's disease and some uh, IBD types of cohorts. Uh, we have several IBD cohorts throughout Canada, and we have also, and this was discussed briefly by Brett Finley uh, in his talk, the child cohort uh, that from zero to five years old. And we believe through these support units, through this role mapping this initiative, we'll be able to sustain the cohorts that are so important for microbiome research. So in a nutshell, uh, research and microbiome research is continuing until at least 2015 with strategic investment, and now there are uh, other initiatives that will help this community to move forward. With this, I thank you.